Hey friends, Coach Shelby and Coach Christine welcoming you in and letting you know it's time for brunch, where there's always an open table, a hot cup of coffee, and endless running fun to keep you moving and grooving. So let's lace up those shoes, put a smile on our face, and let's log some miles because today is exciting, it's special, and something we've never done before here at brunch. So I'm not going to steal all of the thunder. I'm going to sip my cup of coffee and let you uh, unwrap this beautiful present, Coach Christine. Am I officially unwrapping it? Okay, let's, I'm not going to unofficially unwrap it. We're going to unwrap it together. So I'm just going to tease out a little bit more. Such a good sharer. (laughs) I am. I feel like I have to share. Let's share our Crayola cans, crayons, because this is one of those particular things where we're both so excited. We truly are. So friends. You have probably heard us talk a little bit about what we get to do with our spring training group. And we decided that this week, we're gonna peel back the curtain a little bit, maybe show you a bit of that Wizard of Oz. Um, Coach, you you know that I have like three pop culture references. Wizard of Oz is probably the only other one that I could think of. But we want you guys (laughs) to kind of experience the dedicated premium podcast episodes with workouts that our athletes get within our spring training. However, there's a caveat. Know that because we're working one-to-one with them, directly with them as a group, we are able to give them very specific cases or very specific workouts that are unique to them within the coaching that you're going to hear. However, you're going to still be able to follow along because we'll make sure that we use the RPE scale and we're going to have that in episode notes for you guys to check out so you can really a hundred percent understand what we're going to be asking of you in the workouts. If you want to pause maybe and go check that out right here and now you can, but what's really important coaches, we're doing this because we think it's going to be exciting. We think you guys are going to love it, but it's a little spicy. It's a little spicier than our usual long brunch. Wouldn't you say so? This is not light and fluffy like our usual stack of pancakes. We kind of like the Nashville hot chicken dish of brunch. <laughs> That's exactly where my brain a, went. Like, a little chicken and still waffles. Still good. Uh, <laughs> yes, a little chicken and waffles. There we... Oh, God, that sounds really good right now. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Tangent, let's go. <laughs> well, friends, it's going to be a little bit fiery. It's a little bit of a longer-based speed-type session. So if you aren't looking for this right now, you're out for your endurance run, and you're like, what happened to my long, easy, long brunch? Then we're going to have you check out our library of previous long brunches. We're going to actually link chicken soup for the runner soul just because it is one of my all-time favorites it just it's a feel good easy conversation pace where I think you're going to enjoy it but if that's not the one that meets your heart and soul right here and now check out the rest of our episodes any of our long brunches are going to be a traditional endurance pace some of them have a little bit of spice but nothing like this particular one And friends, what we want you to know is that if you like what you hear, if you enjoy it, if you're thinking, I want a bit more of this, then it's really important that you go ahead and also use that link in episode notes to sign up in our interest form because we're going to have our summer training kicking off on June 26th and we're going to have a 16-week and a 20-week group working kind of concurrently during that time frame but just allowing for people who may have Marine Corps, Chicago, some of their own local hometown races. And of course, Coach and I are going to be doing wine and dine. So that's why we're kicking off a 20-week training for ourselves as well during that time. Now, I think... Oh yeah, we do it right in there with you. Yeah. We don't we don't sleep on these workouts, everybody. We test them, we run them, we complain about them, and then we say how good they feel. <laughs> yes, I, think, I think you nailed it, Coach. So enough about us chit-chatting. Um, don't worry, you're still going to have a warm-up. You're going to have a cool-down. You're going to hear it all in the workout. We're going to officially shush and go ahead and bring in that workout and let you hear from start to finish a little bit of what you would, something that you would hear about in in potentially summer as well. Let's go. Hello, rock stars. It's time for PMP. We're going to put the spring pedals to train for the race day medals and crush all of those beautiful PRs. Even though we've already seen quite a few of this training season, we are in lucky at number week 13, going to do some pace changes, test out those shifting gears and really put all of those feet turnover, that leg turnover to the task. So let's get ready to rumble, get into our stretches here. First on deck is our squats in three, two, and one. 
making those feet a little bit more than shoulder width apart, dropping those glutes, making sure to really sit back into your heels, not arching your lower back because no one wants a sore back. We wanna feel that stretch all the way in your glute region. If you're feeling it in your knees at all, you're sitting a little too far forward, trust the process, sit back like you are sitting in a chair. Keep that up for another couple of seconds and then we're gonna switch on over to high knees in three, two, and one. Bring those knees up towards your chest. You're not gonna get all the way there, but it's okay. You can put your hands out in front of you. Really try to drive those knees into those hands. If you can't go fast, that is a-okay. You can slow them down. Again, this is more about getting that stretch in. And then let's gradually make them a little faster towards the last few seconds of this, just to prepare our feet for that great cadence that I know you guys are gonna have. Let's switch on over and butt kick ourselves in three, two, and one. Shifting those legs down and going to have them kick your patooties because this workout is going to make sure we're stretching out those quads. Again, this is a great stretch all in that lower body. Really trying to kick the glutes with your heels, not having to be in pain, but feeling all those muscles will make it a lot easier to find those shifting gears in just a few minutes. So let's wrap those up and get a full body stretch with our jumping jacks in three, two, and one. Jumping jacks, star jumps, whatever you wanna call them. Make a big X with your body. Bring everything back together. And of course, don't forget while your feet come back together in those jumping jacks or star jumps to squeeze the glutes. I have made no qualms. I love my butt, I love my glutes. So give a little extra squeeze here or there, I promise. It'll be great, you'll thank yourself later. Let's shake it out, put a smile on your face and let's get into our walk and warm up in three, two, and one. Coach Christine, I'm excited. I really, 13 is a very lucky number in my life. I know I have a lot of lucky numbers, but I'm so pumped for this. I'm glad that you said that. I love the number 13. Like it's super, super one of my favorite numbers. I always think it's a great fun day when it's Friday the 13th. However, my friend, you do have a lot of lucky numbers, a lot of favorite numbers. Do you have any numbers that you actually do not like? No, I had to really think <laughs> about that for a second. No, I, I can pretty much, it's kind of like how I can relate everything back to running. I can find a reason to love any number. Well, so a, it's a gift. That's a wonderful reminder, friends, that again, here with PMP, that while we have this workout and it is going to be quite the opportunity to shift those gears, that you have to work with whatever it is that you have within your final surge, customize it to yourself using that RPE scale to really help you love that number, whatever that number of your pace is. And again, not allowing ourselves to compare ourselves to maybe somebody else that may post their workout in the group or whatever the case may be, just kind of staying in our lane, shifting our own gears and loving those numbers as we rock through them. But I am super stoked with this workout. It is actually maybe one of my favorites. It feels like it flies by. You first look at it and get a little like, you know, a little bit of that frog in your throat, a little tightening of your chest but then it actually flies by when you're in it. That flies by, frog. So now you ask me if I have a number I don't I, if I don't like. Is there actually a workout you don't like? Because I feel like every single week you're like, this is one of my favorites. And I feel like if we put them all on a roulette wheel, no matter what, you're betting all on the black, on the red, and you're just, is it black and red? Roulette's black. Yeah. Right? I don't yeah. know. Not, okay, I don't play roulette <laughs> a lot. So I had a, I, I mean, I love some poker. Really? Which we should do a poker run. Ooh, ideas flowing through. Coach Shelby, you need to make that note for sure. I didn't realize that you were a card shark, my friend. I oh, love yeah. that idea. Well, oh, yeah. Actually, I, there's not a workout that I don't love when I have enough time between me and the workout. Like sometimes leading up to the workout, I'll have that trepidation that I described. Sometimes in the workout, I'll absolutely loathe it and think life is dumb and I don't understand why I'm running. <laughs> but <laughs> once I'm done and I feel that self 
that sense of self-satisfaction. I've got all those wonderful endorphins. Don't get me started on the beautiful brain chemicals that our bodies produce. But once all of that is done and then I can remove myself from the workout, even the bad workouts, even the tough ones, I usually can see something wonderful from it. If nothing else, just knowing that I didn't give up on myself. And that's always a huge accomplishment to take on to my next workout. Well, and especially with our PM peers that we've seen over these past few weeks, I love seeing everybody really embrace these workouts because this is not easy. This is not something you just roll out of bed one day and decide, oh, I'm, you know, going to go hard. But it is one of those that you can test the waters with. And because we are really focusing on the 80-20 rule, 80% of those quote unquote easy runs, the 20% hard effort, it's been a really awesome like way to see those mindsets transition and seeing RPM peers take that 80% easy and then really going for that 20% hard. So I'm I'm really proud of seeing not only the physical training changes, but also those mindset changes really solidify. You know, I love that you said that because actually I want to give a big shout out to our crew. And you know, we did, we shout them out quite frequently, but gosh, like seriously, they put such an extra pep in my step by some of the revelations that they've had, um, when they're sharing and cheering each other on. And let's be honest, it's all, they have crushed their races this spring season. I know we still working towards some big races on the calendar, but man, people have just absolutely blown me out of the water. I just, I love it. And the way everyone's been cheering each other on, and I think it's really helped for everybody to stay engaged as some, because not everybody's training at the exact same race, so we do have some overlap. I think it's been good for keeping the morale alive that even though you might be on X week of your training cycle, you're seeing other people racing and it's like that dangling carrot, like, okay, I'm going to get there. There's going to be that time for me. I just have to keep putting in the work. Absolutely. So with that putting in the work, could we have had a better transition? Absolutely not. We're going to go into our conversation pace again, following along with what you have in final surge, but right here, five minutes to warm up, taking it up a little bit in three, two, and one move on up friends. I of course have that little TV jingle in my head, moving on up into our conversation pace, feeling a little bit better. RPE scale, we're taking it into more of that 30 to 40%. You don't want to touch into that 50% of your effort here because, again, with our main part of our workout, you're going to be shifting so much into a lot of that tempo zone, maybe even a little bit out of that tempo zone. We want you to really harness this nice and easy for the next four minutes and 30 seconds. I like how you think of moving on up. And I'm thinking, I think there's a song called Easy Street. I don't know. I'm just proud, honestly, that you have any sort of musical (laughs) reference to pull out of your glutes there Yeah, because it just, I'm rubbing off on you. I'm wearing her down, people. You are. You are. I'm actually trying to pay more attention to pop culture nowadays, which is, it's different. It's interesting. I like it. Um, Yeah. (laughs) I was talking with one of the PMPers on our one-on-one calls and they were astounded that you did not know the flower song by Miley Cyrus. She was shocked. I still don't know what song it is. Do I need to go listen oh, to it? Yes. I'm a, you should pause the recording right here, right now, just so you can go listen to it. How about you add it to our playlist? Does it work within the playlist for this kind of a workout? I'll make it work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there is never a wrong time for music or really Miley Cyrus. Perfect. All right. So we've got this going, friends. You're in your conversation pace. Let's talk about what you can expect for today's workout because we're teasing it out quite a bit. You may have looked at your final surge and had that goal for you. You may have been like, yes, this is what I've been looking forward to. Um, If that is the case, I want you to definitely reach out to us. You know where to find us, but you can always email us at info at timeforbrunch.com or you can just make a comment directly into that workout right then and there. But you are going to have primary for this time, eight sets that we're going to be working into. Again, kind of shifting gears, but within our tempo range. So we're actually going to start our four minutes into an upper tempo RP scale of six to seven, 60 to 70% of our max effort, keeping it to that one sentence that you can get out at a time. Then we're going to shift that gear down a little bit to two minutes of a lower tempo work, five to six, 
that's a little bit, actually you're starting to get into maybe more of a conversation pace, the upper end of conversation pace. Then we'll have 30 seconds of active recovery. Again, that may look very different for each and every single one of you. That could be where you pull back into a walk or you stay in a light jog, kind of like you are here right now, a little bit of a wog in between. Again, making this work according to what you need for today and honoring where your body's at, of course. But a few things that we love you to keep in mind as we roll through it, we're going to have a bit of an acceleration glider or a strider drill for you to work off of, because that's going to kind of help you feel how to smoothly change those gears through. We don't want them to be very stilted. I I don't know about you, coach, but there's a lot of times that whenever I hear that it's time for me to make a pace change, I kind of like just pause my body and I don't smoothly allow that transition to happen. So it's really be conscious of that when we call you into that different pace change to smoothly pull back or smoothly push up. It doesn't have to be where you're hitting that pace within the first five seconds. You can take about 20 to 30 seconds to get there. Yeah, I tend to tense up. And again, I know all of our PM peers know this, but Coach Christine just beautifully explained this entire workout. If your head is spinning with the numbers of the 30, the 6, the 7, the 10, it's a touchdown. Don't worry. Again, you know that we're going to give you the verbal cues all the way through it. And I know, Christine, sports are not like your forte other than running, but that is a football reference of the touchdown, the big goal (laughs) thing. I'm making the the motion with my hands. (laughs) That's that's hilarious. Oh, my gosh. I love it. Well, friends. That you are right. That's what we're here for to kind of walk you through this, talk you through this, and of course, cheer you on. Before we get into cheering you on, you're going to be here for another 45 seconds, and then we are going to go ahead and have you pull back for just a moment so that we can get you into those strides. Coach, I know that you actually tend to use these more towards the end of your workout. They are both great before and after, and I even like throwing them into some during. So friends, keep these in your back pocket. If you've got some long runs on that run agenda of yours, that final surge, you may see some striders popping in the middle. Um, if you don't have it actually programmed, still, I'm, I'm down with you adding that in if you need to spice it up just a little bit. It's a little springtime surprise. Hot. <laughs> All right, friends, let's go ahead and pull back just a little bit. You don't have to pull back officially into a walk, but we're going in three, two, and one. And coach, right out of the gate, can I have you tuck them in and count them down into their official first striding drill? And then we'll have a 30 second walk on the other side of that. Yep. So get ready, get set. We're going to bring it up, bring it down and repeat this five times through. We'll talk you through it, but let's go ahead, take a big deep breath. Don't tense up, don't clam up, but we are gonna move those feet and those legs a little bit faster now in three, two, and one. Gonna accelerate for these 10 seconds, gradually building the speed as if you're trying to run towards something and it's just kind of getting away from you a little bit more each time. Gonna sit here, spend the next 10 seconds here near that top speed where you're really feeling it. You're full on trying to catch probably a dog, something in its mouth. And then you're gonna gradually start decreasing right here, right now in these 10 seconds, bringing it down like a parachute pulling you back. And then you're going to go ahead and take it nice and easy here and rest for 30 seconds in three, two, and one. Ha. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> I love how you're referencing trying to catch the dog. I know in my mind, the minute you started talking about like something that's just out of your grasp, I started seeing like an old Looney Tunes or Bug Bunnies commercial, like a carrot dangling at the end of a fishing pole. So that's absolutely a great thing, friends. Maybe yours is a wine glass. Maybe yours is catching up with the kiddos. But either way, let's get ready to do it nice and tall from the get go. Take a deep breath and then let's take it up nice and easy and smooth in three, two, and one. So you're working through that RPE skill. You're going to go into about your 30%, 40%, that conversation pace. Go in just a little bit faster, friends, pushing in to a slightly faster speed, continuing to move your feet underneath you. Of course, engaging your core all the way through and keep it rolling just a little bit faster there. And there you go. Go ahead and start pulling it back already nice and easy, gliding on down, shifting it nice and smooth, like oil, like seriously silky, (laughs) smooth in five, four, three, two, and one back into your light walk or very light jog. 
according to whatever you need for today. And then 30 seconds here, about 25 more seconds before we take it into our third drill. I always think of that song, you make me want to shout, but your oh, hands That's a good shout. one. Right? Definitely. That doesn't make the people get going. Oh, I don't know Such a good does. one. <laughs> All right, rock stars. Coach, you want to take it in five? All right. We're going to get up, start accelerating in three, two, and one. Get going. Put some extra power behind those steps, really pushing the ground away from you. Going to get up to top speed here in two and one. Ten seconds here at that top speed, really letting your legs do the running. Again, making sure that your feet are popping off. We're pushing that ground actively away from us. And then we're going to throw that little balloon behind you, counterweight it, and bring it on down, jogging it until you're either at that super light jog or that walk in three, two, and one. That's how you do it. So nice and easy here. And then we're going to go into our fourth Um, the penultimate, of course, of the five drills. And then we're going to shift right into our workout uh, by getting you into a conversation pace again. And then we're going to get those gears going, friends. But we're testing out how we're going to smoothly do it from start to finish in that workout right here and now as we take it back on up in just five seconds. So nice and easy. Let's get ready. Three, two, one. Move those feet a little faster, taking into your conversation pace. Again, that 30 to 40%, a little faster there. Continue to push on through, getting in nice and tall, shoulders down and back, pushing those feet a little faster, getting those arms going, hitting that top speed right about here. Put a big old smile on your face and then we'll start our way down that hill, gliding on down bringing it back down into that conversation pace, taking a good deep breath as we pull it back into our walk in three, two, and one. 30 seconds here. And then we're going to wrap it up with our fifth drill. And again, friends, the whole purpose behind this, whether you're adding these in, I mean, there's a lot of physiological reasons, but specifically for this workout is we want you to be smooth between those pace changes. We want you to make sure that there's no like stuttering of the car. You are a fine motor vehicle like I don't know do you want to be a Ferrari do you want to be a Maserati coach what car do you want to be tell us on the other side of this girl in three this is why we're running coaches so let's go in two and one bringing up that gas pedal pushing it down accelerating in these 10 seconds Maybe you're a Ferrari, maybe you're a Maserati, but no matter what type of car you are envisioning yourself as, let's spend the next 10 seconds here at that top speed in two and one, giving it what you got, feeling the wind in your hair and a cool cup of your beverage next to you. And then gradually we're gonna bring it on down coming back into that light jog, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, and then let's catch your breath in three, two, and one, five, done, guys. Awesome, we're gonna let you have that breath catching right here and now, then we're gonna take you back up in the conversation pace just for a couple minutes, and then we're gonna shift right into our workout. I know, you're thinking you you would feel pretty comfortable staying in conversation pace for today, but the magic happens right outside that comfort zone, so that's what we're gonna do. So, you know, Enjoy the next 90 seconds here before you push you into that extra bit of magic and sparkle. People think we're all sweet and savory, but it's like, listen, when we're actually (laughs) being able to dive into all of the coaching, we're salty. We're spicy. (laughs) Like we're adding some extra seasoning, guys. Yes, absolutely. And then you can't use the word salty without me thinking about salt and vinegar chips. But we'll save those for last unless if friends, you want to have that magical potato chip in between those fingers make sure you stay nice and light i always think of a feather i personally always think of a peacock feather because i'm always all about strutting your stuff as you're out there but i know some people like that whole some people like the egg some people like the potato chip whatever really puts a smile on your face and helps you to stay nice and light as we start to get ready for that shifting gears starting on our first of eight sets four minutes of 60 to 70% of your work before you get into two minutes of a lower tempo, still going to be out of that comfort zone, and then a 30-second active recovery. Your voice gets all soft and sweet and innocent. Ah. I hear about to, like, drop the hammer. I'm like, I see, like, the sparkle in your eyes. Yeah, be very afraid. (laughs) 
Oh, friends, we do absolutely love this because we love seeing all of the progress. So again, progress cannot be made unless if we're willing to believe in ourselves and push forward. And sometimes it's hard to believe in ourselves and that's what we're here for, to remind you that, yes, you've got what it takes. So get yourself that pat in the back, put that extra pep in your step. Let's get ready to rock it in three, two, and one. Let's go. You're gliding on up. Remember, it's going to take you about 30 seconds to get into that 60 to 70%. And again, as always, we're always going to recommend that you be a bit more conservative out of the gate, maybe 60% for this first one. Feel how it actually just courses through your body. How does your body feel as you're in this particular gear? And I want you to start really creating a strong mind body connection of how does your breath change? How do your shoulders sit? Is your core engaged? All of those little kind of head to toe checks and then kind of imprinting it onto your brain before we continue to move forward. But right around here, you should be at that level. Go ahead and hold on to it. Hit it into cruise control as Coach Shelby would say. As you're sitting there about like checking the form, we actually really should make a song about like, do your ears hang low? And we should make it all running form tips because that's exactly where my mind goes. I love that you guys never get tired of my musical references. Again, I can bring it back. <laughs> you can't, yes, you can. You can't always bring it back. I think we were pretty good about bringing it back um, from music references for you, definitely pop culture as well. And between both of us, we could always bring it back to somehow Disney or food um, or sparkles. So yeah, we, we could always figure out a way, but friends, that's exactly the whole point of it. You are figuring out a way. You're 90 seconds in this upper tempo work. And I think for a lot of folks, myself included, it's sometimes a little bit more challenging to kick off the workout sets in that upper level. We're used to a, a progression and by all means, don't get me wrong, progression may be my very top favorite way to jam, but there is a lot of benefit to working in that upper level out of the gate, especially since we gave you a really good long warm up. We didn't by any means push into this too quickly but we want you to feel that upper level work, kind of how you would feel coming out of the gate and then feel that gear shift as you pull back. And there's so many reasons that you would have to pull back in a race, especially as we prepare for more live races um, coming up our way on everybody's different calendars. But maybe you went out of that gate pretty strong. You were feeling good. You were in your race pace, but then you may have hit a block of people you know that it makes more sense to pull back your pace versus trying to do that shifting from side to side. Oh, that is so hard for me not to do that shifting, trying to get in and out of the crowds. There is no reason to do that, friends, because you just end up adding a whole bunch of mileage and it doesn't really actually make much sense for you time-wise. So we're going to practice a little bit of that pulling back and then that active recovery again. And I'm really happy you made that point because I think it's an important distinction that yes, progression starting off conservative and getting faster is a great tried and true. And I know both of us recommend that a lot for races, but your workouts is where you get the luxury to play around and really stretch your bounds. So again, when it comes to race day, like you said, your muscles, your body, your brain, everything is already had a taste of that. It's not a shock to your system. And I will be honest though, I'm a Bob and Weaver. I, I do it while I drive. I do it while I run. I hate being behind people. I have to say that I do it more so when I drive than when I'm with people, but I mean, <laughs> at a race, but oh my gosh, yes, it is without a doubt, but I get angry with myself when I do it. So I'm trying to help others to not get angry with themselves because when you do look down at your watch, you're going to see you've added a whole bunch of extra distance that isn't going to help you finish at that strong time. Maybe if you have a time goal. So just go ahead and pull back, conserve your energy so you feel a little bit better later later on um, and appreciate those like that feeling of wanting to go a little faster because that we don't always have that feeling but here and now you're maybe looking forward to pulling it back so let's do it in five four three two and one this is your opportunity but you're not going into conversation pace unless if we specifically said that in your workout for today in your final surge for us here we're all the way around going to our lower tempo so you could probably get a sentence or two out when you catch your breath now this is where it takes a lot of mental fortitude because your body's telling you it's time for you to pull back in the conversation pace for a jog or a walking recovery but we have you working here for a myriad of reasons so we want you to stick with it for 90 more seconds. I know you can do that, right? 
can do anything for 90 seconds, especially when you have somebody in your ear saying you can do it. It's a lot harder to ignore us than it is to ignore your inner voice. Absolutely. I know if I have it pumping in my ear, I tend to I tend to let it happen, which is probably why I have so many music references from all those miles I've ran. It's just stuck in the brain. So if there's going to be anything stuck in your brain, you guys are doing it. You can do it. And you are kicking asphalt. Absolutely. And literally, we have just under 55 seconds to go before you get to pull back into your active recovery. Now, those 30 seconds of active recovery will likely feel like the shortest 30 seconds of your entire life. Or maybe you're feeling like, what? I don't even need a recovery. We're going to ask you to please take it. Whether you feel like you need it or you cannot wait to get into it, we want you to all pull back to whatever it is that we have on your final surge. Or if you're following along from an RPE scale, and maybe we put that on your final surge, we want you to go ahead and pull it back into an active recovery. You should be able to catch your breath, feel good, and then be ready to start that next set. So we're here for 20 more seconds, friends. And you might not even have to curse us at this round. Trust me, we got seven more rounds. There's plenty of time. <laughs> Do you think that we get cursed out a lot just out of curiosity with nine seconds on the clock? <laughs> I mean, I'd be surprised if the answer is a no. Okay, in three, <laughs> two, and one. Rock stars, we want you to let us know. Do you secretly curse at us or not so secretly? Are you more I than- think I'm going to be disappointed <laughs> if I don't get cursed at, and I feel like that would mean that we have to step it up even more. Are you loud? So be careful with well, the answers. <laughs> well, now we've just, now I feel like we've, we have definitely led the witness, my friend. I think that there would be an objection in a court of law, but <laughs> there is no objection in this of running. So let's go ahead and move back into that upper tempo work. Three, two, and one. Let's go for four minutes. This oh, is where this one I always love because it's like, okay, I've done this before. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again. Like I I feel like one is hard because you're kind of still shaking off that dust. Even with a great warm-up like we did, it's still one of those, it's like your first date. Like, all right, what should I expect? What's it going to feel like? Is the person going to be a creeper? <laughs> you always go to the, the normal. Creeper. Yeah. <laughs> I do. This is why I have not been single in so long. Yeah. It's just too hard. It is pretty creepy out there. There's no doubt about that. Well, I will <laughs> say that I think the first one is notoriously difficult all the way around. Maybe it's because we love it and we have a hard time actually feeling the pace which is why we are practicing this over the course of the entire workout. We're actually giving ourselves the opportunity to feel the pace, which is something we don't tend to do in this day and age where we live and die by our technology. Um, I know that we all tend to like listen to those beeps or those buzzes that are programmed watch may tell us we're looking down at it constantly and it's so valuable to really learn to tune in to where your body is at so let's keep trying to practice that harness all of that energy and I always say where your body feels versus what your mind is telling you because our minds are designed to keep us alive and comfortable <laughs> and while this work is going to definitely help you feel fitter and stronger afterwards when you're in this upper tempo you may feel like you're you know not feeling the best, <laughs> but <laughs> your brain's going danger, danger will yes, Robinson. <laughs> absolutely. So we want to just remind you to listen to your body. And sometimes what it takes is to just focus on your breath right here and now. Read a great report recently on all of the value of nose breathing versus mouth and nose breathing versus mouth breathing. And the jury is still out. So listen to your what works best for you. It does appear that breathing in and out of your nose. Well, it does help to calm your neurosystems down and minimize that panic. May not bring in the amount of oxygen that you need when you're in this upper level work. So if this is where you want to just slightly open up your mouth, allow that oxygen to come in both through your nose and your mouth and exhale all of that carbon dioxide so you can keep on rolling through and fueling those muscles absolutely fine. If you personally find that you need and you feel the best by calming your brain systems down by only breathing in and out of your nose, that's absolutely fine. Um, or maybe you feel like you're in allergy season and that's not possible. You haven't oh. breathed through or you haven't been able to breathe through your nose since the allergy season started. <laughs> that would be my camp right now. <laughs> That's all right. Having your mouth slightly open, there could be a fly that makes its way in and look, free running fuel. Yeah, no, I'm just absolutely. kidding. That's disgusting. <laughs> well, you have. I actually, yeah, of I have course. done that. I'm of not going to lie. There's been a lot of times I've been attacked by flying insects who decided to 
give me a challenge in my vegetarianism. Yeah. Um, but I do, I nose breathe on my easy runs. I make a conscious effort to nose breathe on my easy runs, but I absolutely, during these harder sessions for myself, it's it's not adequate for my own personal you know, yeah. isms. And, and coach, that's exactly right. For easy runs, if you can, friends, get into a good concentrated practice of trying to breathe in and out of your nose. Again, barring the fact that you may have allergies or maybe some sinus issues, but it is really beneficial in helping to calm your systems down, helping you to really fuel your lungs. So you want to be doing that deep belly breathing as well. So if you are right here now kind of huffing and puffing, this is your opportunity to just kind of calm it down, knowing that we have 15 seconds here and then we're going to pull into that lower temporal work maybe a high conversation pace, but again, trying to either match that first set or staying a little stronger as we rock on through here in five, four, three, two, and one, pulling it down for 120 seconds. As you know, I'm so fond of the seconds versus the minutes. (laughs) It makes me giggle every single time, but I've started doing that even when we're not recording or coaching. I look at something and I start converting it to seconds. And this is a great way of how the subliminal messagings not only infiltrate our running, but our everyday lives. And I know if you are jamming out to this playlist right now, I have successfully infiltrated with all my musical preferences. I have heard so much great feedback about your playlist. So coach, yes, we we do love how you are. absolutely broadening everyone's horizons with your playlist and you've created so many fun ones for a PMP over the spring training season uh it's I think one day I remember writing you like hey I need some fresh music for the workouts can you create me a few playlists and and think that maybe you delivered seven within I don't know seven minutes it's like you were like coach put me in I've been waiting for this <laughs> Hold my coffee. <laughs> Not really. I, I want my coffee. That's but because I would drink your coffee, so don't let exactly. me hold it. So, friends, you are still holding on, though, here, um, knowing that maybe there's coffee waiting for you at the other end of this. That's something that I tend to remind myself of. I had a little treat waiting for me at the end of my runs, and usually it is coffee, especially harder efforts. we got 35 seconds here. We'll have that 30-second recovery, and then we'll have two in the bank of shifting gears. I am so pumped at this one. I can't wait to run this one again myself because I've said it all throughout PMP. It's ignited my speed work tenfold because Same. it's it, it, re, it reimagines what I'm programming for myself and it really allows me just to have so much fun with these workouts. So with that, friends, let's have a little bit more fun in our recovery in three two and one active recovery here. Don't, don't pull it back into a complete stop unless if you've had a side stitch happen or, um, of course those stop lights, which I have a love hate relationship with stop lights, depending on where I'm at with my workout lately, they've annoyed <laughs> me more than they've actually like excited me. But again, it depends. Sometimes like, Oh yeah, stop light. Don't threaten me with a good time. But <laughs> But and maybe take one of my my wonderful dragon breaths here and now. Big deep in and just really let it all out. Get some weird looks. Keep the creepos away. Because we're going back into the next set. Y'all got this. Four minutes on the clock. Three, two, and one. Where's dragons, dogs, whatever. I'm a lover of all creatures. And half of my analogies revolve around either music or dogs and animals, apparently. I'm learning a lot about myself during this PMP. The 16 weeks, it's definitely, it's teaching me a lot. Oh, coach, I love that you said that because I'm going to draw a parallel here while people are finding their way into that upper level tempo. Again, a reminder of 60 to 70% of your max. And if you wanted to maybe follow with your final surge, we may have told you the first four of these sets, you were supposed to stay in 60 um, percent of your max effort, then definitely, or maybe your specific case range, and maybe we bumped it up towards the other half of this, but following whatever it is that you have in those notes, of course, listening to your body, because sometimes what we have prescribed isn't always what you have on that on the dock for you that day, just from a physicality standpoint. But I love that you talked about learning a lot about yourself at 16 weeks, because I think that's what it comes down to, is learning that sometimes we have way more than we're capable of doing. And I think that's a big takeaway for a lot of the athletes that I've talked to. 
or learning that sometimes it's okay to be kinder to ourselves along the way. And maybe today the shifting gears feels a little harder, but knowing that with enough patience and consistency in a couple of weeks, it won't feel quite as difficult. So I think that's really important to draw that reminder and parallel. Um, and then learning different things about our actually running form, learning different things about like the soundtrack we have in our vo- in our head that maybe it's around set four where we're like, oh, I'm done. I don't need to do it anymore. And just reminding yourself, I've been here before. I can absolutely push through. Yeah, I've heard a lot of feedback from the PM peers about how they feel like they finally get the fact that they're capable of so much more than what they've tried or given themselves credit for. And it's really beautiful to see the notes come through on Final Surge and saying, I was nervous about this one or I didn't think I could do it. And I did it. I went well. And seeing how they're taking what could be a negative of, oh, I didn't hit it exactly. And instead, they're empowering themselves through all of these coaching, all of these weeks and saying, I did this. It might not have been picture perfect, but I stuck with it. I didn't count myself out. And I think that's been one of the biggest takeaways that I've really seen. I mean, yes, we love the PR and we love that you guys are getting them. But seeing that mindset change and seeing you embrace the processing of all of it versus looking at singular workouts as the end all be all. That's really amazing as a coach to see. Exactly what it's all about. I had this conversation with one of the athletes earlier this week. had this conversation actually with my own doctor. How at the end of the day, while maybe the workout didn't go as prescribed or the race didn't go uh, according to what we were hoping for, even worked for, it is really important to know that we are in this for the long haul and that this is all just going to add up and help us. Maybe it doesn't necessarily translate to us exactly being faster tomorrow. But what it does is that it reminds us that we're gritty, that we're capable, that we absolutely have that power within us. We have that fire to continue looking to level up ourselves and our lives, our challenges. And that's, that's I think, like the best. Like, it's better than a medal. It's better than a PR. And you know we like our medals and PR. I about to say, I'm like, I do like my medals. I'm not going to lie. We've, we've made no qualms about the fact that I've signed up for races just because it's like, ooh, I like the medal. It's shiny. I think that's, but, a, that's the case for a lot of folks. I think a lot of folks are really motivated by medals. Um, especially some of the Florida ones that are so fun. But with that said, friends, let's go ahead and pull back into the lower part of our tempo. Pace in three, two, and one. That's it. 60% of your max effort, maybe a 50%, depending on where you're at, knowing that we'll be hitting on that active recovery here very soon. And I like what you said, too, about how it seeps into everything else with these workouts because I know for myself having taken my break and getting back into the speed work from my own physicality standpoint these are building blocks for me but it reignites my zest to go out there and run and we are very transparent we're humans like look at the end of the day we love running but it's like we tell our athletes you can't be on the grind 365 24 7 so especially after coming back from the break these type of workouts I really do feel kind of gives you that shock to your system like oh yeah I remember this feeling like (laughs) let's go and it's exciting yes Yes, it is. It actually, what I love is the confidence. I feel like nothing makes you feel quite as ready for your day if you're doing this early in the morning or as accomplished if you're doing this in the evening before bed as knowing that you did put your best effort in. So that's always what's most important. We've got 45 more seconds here to so continue pulling through. And then again, do a little bit of a check in with yourself. Maybe you're holding that peacock feather and you're going to get ready to strut your stuff in an active recovery. Maybe you're holding your potato chip and thinking what you're having for a meal afterwards. <laughs> but in the meantime, knowing that you've got what it takes to finish this through as we pull into our active recovery here in just about 20 seconds. Dun, dun, dun. No, I'm just kidding. But I do want to pick, take a point here, especially because we're going to go in the recovery Everybody, no matter how good you're feeling, check your breathing, making sure that you are constantly reassessing and making sure that you're not getting a little overzealous. 
let's pull it back into that active recovery in three, two, and one. That 30 seconds here, making sure that if you're feeling it a little bit, you maybe take that conversation pace a little bit lighter. Maybe if it's in your final search, that walk, just pulling it back a little bit and making sure that you're reading your body where you're at now. If you are feeling good, keep doing what you're doing. But just again, making those little mental notes as we go into the fourth round to make sure that we are constantly taking in those cue points. So let's bring it back up to the upper tempo in three, two, and one. The RP scale, six to seven. Since we're in the fourth one, you might be looking at that RP scale of seven being like, hey, I see you, I'm coming for you. You might be really happy at that six right now. Whichever feels good, just keeping the momentum going, knowing that you're at the fourth and kind of compartmentalizing. Four down, four to go, you're halfway there, the glass is half full, all of the isms, now's the time to pull them out. Wait, would you start calling it, like, do you start thinking right now, like, do you put, so I count my fingers when I'm working out. (laughs) Just letting you know. Do you start like already like in this one because you're in your fourth set? Do you put that like fourth digit down or count that you're in your fourth set and like as done? Or do you still feel like I've got five sets to go? How do you do Like, how do you talk your brain through it? Just out of curiosity, because we all do it differently, I'm sure. That's a really great question. We actually haven't talked about this before. So if I'm in my fourth set, I'm looking at it as I'm about to close the door. Or if you're like an Apple user, you're about to close the rings. Like I'm right there. So I'm just about halfway done. I kind okay. of count my chicken before it hatches. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure that I, I don't know if people would be surprised. I don't. Like I won't. Like I'll do like something weird like with my fingers if I'm like using my fingers, which I do. <laughs> I'll kind of like, like tap that particular digit. Like I'll tap it like where it's actually like tapping against, I don't know, my palm or whatever the case may be, like that I'm on that set, but I don't actually kind of like officially close it until I'm into the active recovery of it and looking at the next one. So I think that's fascinating, friends. If you want to share in the group, whenever you come across this part of your workout, let us know what you do. Do you kind of count it as already like you're in it, you're pretty much done with it, or do you kind of just wait until it's officially done? Um, I'm so curious about that. I don't know why that came to mind, but mainly because I really do. I like 100% feel like that finger against my palm tapping when I'm working in it. Well, going back to our numbers conversation, I really love even numbers because they can be nice and sliced right down the middle. So for me, this is me like I'm about to get the bite of the carrot and then the other half's going to dangle for the next four sets. So I get just a little taste, a little something, something to keep me going and then have that strong finish. I always concentrate on strong finishes, whether it's two sets left to the finish or four sets. If it's that halfway point, I'm already looking towards the almost done. Uh, I'm a very glass half full type of person. I love that. I love that. So I guess this is where I would be considered a realist. I'm I'm like excited about what I've done so far and I'm excited of what's coming up, but I like am in it at that very moment. I've never considered myself a like a realist, but let's not, let's not. This is very fortuitous. (laughs) This is very fortuitous of our business relationship though, of like our, our strengths and our differences to where I'm like nibbling on the carrot and you're like, that's great. The carrot's still over here. I'm like, just let me have a little taste. (laughs) I'm doing hand motions think, too as I'm doing I this. I think we do a little bit of ebb and flow where sometimes maybe I'm on the high of already like, like the carrot's there. We're already done. I'm like, ah, or, you know, vice versa. But friends, your carrot, whether it's nibbled or it's officially done, <laughs> I'm not hundred percent sure yet. Know that we have about 25 seconds before we pull back into that two minutes, um, pulling back that shifting of the gear. That's when you start to decelerate a little bit. And again, really bringing in that mental strength because you have everything in your brain likely wants you to pull back into a walk as you shift back. It's just something normal. Like we hear that shifting and we want to automatically just pull back into a walk. Resist that urge in three, two, and one, and then pull it back nice and slowly, just a bit. We're going again, you're shifting from that seven to that six, or maybe that six to the five, just a little bit. Of course, we have that pace range as well. You know, I've been playing along with some of my workouts. 
some of them, I give it myself a bit of a wider pace range and see if I can like nail it right in the middle. And others, I give myself a really, 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 really narrow pace range. And it's just so interesting how like they both seem to play into my mind a little bit. I, I kind of struggle with the very no small range. Um, personally, which is funny because really? yeah, because when I have a longer range, I'm still trying to nail a very specific in the middle. So it's essentially the same thing. It goes back to like counting seconds versus minutes. It's all mind See, games. I'm opposite. Really? I'm totally opposite. I would rather have a very small window than a large window because I feel like the large window, I start competing with myself in my head. Like to trying try to not best be it every single time? Yes. Okay. To where when I have a smaller window, I try to stay more consistent. Fascinating. I, I need less room. I need a very short leash, apparently. Very. Also, this says a lot about our personality types. It's, <laughs> it's fascinating how all these things come out to play. Well, friends, one thing that's for sure going to come out to play is that you will be able to celebrate that carrot definitely coming to an end, I guess. When when did carrots coming to an end? You can celebrate, but it is here and now because we've got 25 seconds before we have exactly the halfway point of this workout for you to just take a deep breath and pull it back nice and easy in 15 seconds. But don't stop just yet. Don't start slowing down yet. You get to take this all the way through for a five, four, three, two, and one. Now you can go ahead and pull it back a little bit, catch your breath, shake it out. This is where I would literally physically actually shake out my hands. I think that my running friends always think that I'm a little nuts. So because I do it, I kind of do a little bit of a shoulder roll or shoulder shake. Sometimes I actually kind of stretch out my neck when I'm in there. I definitely celebrate being halfway through and then knowing that I've got the other side coming on up. So coach, you ready to rock it? I'm ready to rock it. Let's go. Count it down, coach. All right. Three, two, and one. Let's go a little faster using those striders to push on up, friends. And then finding your way into that upper level temple work. Again, probably just one sentence is all you could get out. What does one sentence mean? It means that if we were rolling shoulder to shoulder, you would be super irritated if I kept asking you a bunch of questions that you had to <laughs> that you had to answer. Which she does do. Mm-hmm. You do, I do do. I do. And I would yeah. like to assure you of one thing. Your running friends don't think you're crazy, Christine. We know, know. you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. You we walked right are. into that one. You we like always. held the door open, dung the bell, like I'm here. We and I, it was are. just there for the taking. That's just kind of what we're at, right? Like it works for us. I mean, I think that that's one of the things where runners kind of take a little bit of secret pride um, in knowing that maybe we're not 100% normal. We, we run to the beat of our own drum, if you will. But friends, you should definitely be at that pace right here and now, whether it's because we gave you that pace range, be it short or more extended, you should be at your goal pace or your goal RPE and just locking it in. Now, again, we know that quite a few of you are using run walk as well. So following along with what we've got for you, what it could very well mean is that we're using these sets for you to practice both running stronger and walking stronger. Because as we've mentioned in previous workouts, we're probably going to mention multiple times in the future, we love those walking recoveries. There's so many benefits to them. However, we want to make sure that you are still walking strong versus kind of walking to smell the roses. I'm, I swear, it's like we share our brains sometimes. No lie. I was just about to bring in, like one thing we haven't talked about is our run walkers in the group. And this workout especially, I love for run walkers because we both are very open. We love run walk, but that also doesn't mean that you can't test your bounds with what that run walk looks like. And it's been great to see everybody who's doing run walk really kind of stretching their time frame in their running portion of their run walk. And I've heard great feedback of how it's really making those run walk ratios stronger, even if they're shorter on their other workouts. And kind of, again, taking that secret sauce and making it work for their workouts. And it doesn't matter if you are new to the run walk, if you use run walk tried and true, 
this especially is, I mean, again, shifting gears is basically all we have to say within this entire workout. And it really does help the fluidity of your pacing. And like you said, making sure that walk portion is staying a powerful walk and not becoming a stroll. I'm so glad that you, again, talked about that because actually if we're going to talk about numbers, I want to call out and like give a really big shout out. Um, one of our run walkers who started off this season with her mile time since we do the test to check in. And obviously it's not, I am so hesitant to use the test word because people think that that means like we're going to grade you. It literally just has to do with us being able to really serve the athlete where they're at. And um, I can I feel like I want to call her out, but maybe I'll, I'll check in with her before I officially call her out. But she went from a 16 minute, absolutely amazing for the record. Absolutely amazing. Whether you're a 25 minute, minute miler or you're a six minute miler. But what I want to say is that she went from 16 to 930. And it's because she's been working so strongly on those walk breaks or walking really strong and efficiently. And she doesn't give herself enough credit. That is a common theme that I want to say with our rock stars here. We want to definitely make sure that you guys are giving yourself a big pat on the back. So whether you feel like you've made great strides from the very beginning, or you feel like you still have quite a bit of progress that you want to make, it's so important that you give yourself a lot of credit right here and now as we pull back in three, two, and one into that strong, but a little bit of a lighter pace before we make it into our active recovery. I had an athlete too, who again, out of respect for privacy, won't use the name, but this last mile test, she shaved almost three minutes off it's, of her mile. It's mind blowing. It's literally And she mind said blowing. just the encouragement, the the strength training we've been programming, all of the, the little components are adding up. And she, again, she took the bull by the horns. She goes, why not? She goes, I want to try. I want to make sure that I'm testing myself. Well, and it's and given her the confidence to do that. I want to talk about that too. Like, so I have someone else who also talked about her, the portion where we test, because we didn't just test mileage. We wanted to make an overall right. stronger athlete. So they talked about their actual like core portion of their test. They actually noticed that they went down in the amount they were doing within the time frame that we allotted but they felt so much stronger in them and they said that when they think back to when they first started they noticed that they were kind of just going with like momentum they weren't really allowing themselves to feel or engage the movement and now they're actually engaging feeling strong and they see that it's carrying over to other portions of their of their athleticism of their everyday health and wellness I love that like that makes me so happy um, so it doesn't always have to be a getting faster or having more reps right. or more weight. It can have to do with having a stronger connection and consistency. And I mean, that goes such a long way. And honestly, like I celebrate when I am have the smallest wins along the way. So friends, we got 10 seconds before you get to pull it on back and catch your breath in three, two, and one. Awesome work, rock stars. Seriously, coach, I think it's extraordinary. We have just three sets left. How is that possible? Right. And I'm so, I'm so, I love this so much because again, <laughs> the terminology that we're using, just three sets. Yeah. We're being very mindful as we always are. It's just this. This is the one time the just word is okay. Absolutely. Like give yourself some credit. Like if, I hate when people say, I hate a strong word. I don't like when people put themselves down and say, oh, it's just a mile. It's just three miles. But in this case, you just have three sets left. So it, it's always funny how we give a lot of power to the words, but then very nicely just kind of kind of use them differently every now and then. So very curious, but we're going to go into our next set. We gave you guys a little bit of an extended active recovery because we also gave you a little bit of an extended upper level work, but we're going into it this time. Four minutes and three, two, and one. Let's go, Rockstar. You're feeling a little stronger here um, as you have an opportunity to kind of maybe recover a little bit more, even though I added in about 30 seconds onto that last four minute segment. We're not going to do it here. We're going to stick to that four and two because, hey, it's a little bit of a spring training surprise. Why not? Maybe because we're getting 
super stoked about some of the races that we've got coming up ourselves, Coach. I don't know. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. I haven't done a race in a while. But really, it feels like it feels like we just did. It was November. Feels and like- we're in March. <laughs> like it was just yesterday (laughs) my my legs don't feel like it was just yesterday but I just even though we're not racing our races we're just going to run and have fun it's just the energy I can't wait to have the in-person energy to match what our training group's been for the virtual energy it's just like it's the best of both worlds and Christine just so you know that was another Miley Cyrus reference in case I had no clue oh my god (laughs) I have no clue. I have no clue whatsoever, but that's okay. Hopefully my friends will forgive me. Um, I think it's also a lot of fun, like, because yes, we have, we've made it quite clear. I I love talking to folks and being like, I will never come from a place of judgment if you sign up for every race that there is. However, knowing that- Because you do it. Yes, exactly. So, but not knowing that not every race is going to be a race that you can actually race it. There are going to be quite a few that you're going to have to- run, enjoy, stop and smell the flowers, or in our case, stop and take pictures with the character stops kind of a thing. Um, you go to for the camaraderie, you go for that community feeling. I'm never going to forget my first live race after like things started to lift from COVID. Um, or I should say, after things started to lift from COVID, and I finally felt comfortable to get back out into groups myself because it, 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 everybody had different comfort zones and all of that jazz. But it was, I think I actually cried. Just being with the fellow running community and feeling us all running our own race or doing what we needed to do, but being there together, walking the same miles or running the same miles, the same pathway just felt so good. So that's, I think, one of the things that we keep coming back to and what I love so much about community, whether it's because you were working with this group together or because you love seeing your friends at races, whatever the case may be, is literally being able to kind of connect with others. Oh, I remember my first race back. I had a lot of anxiety because I was definitely pushing my comfort zone, but I found a really good cure for that. Do you want me to tell you or should yes, I Yes, like because I think there's a lot out? of, no, no. There's so many people who get so anxious before their races. And, and sometimes it ends up becoming more butterflies. They get a bit more used to it. It never goes 100% away. But so, for some people, it's very paralyzing. So I do want to know what you did. So in all honesty, again, I pushed myself to race because I needed to kind of start branching out for my own well-being. Um, and it was my first race, my first marathon. And literally, I, I put myself in that mindset of, okay, this is not the end of the world. I can be excited. I can be wanting to have goals and everything, but I'm just happy to be here. And I think that's a really hard thing, especially if you've been running for a while or if you're doing a first race even. And just realizing again, going back to that simple word of we get to do this and know that at the end of the day, this isn't my last race. This isn't my last opportunity. I will have more ahead of me. Wait, we need to know more, but we're going to pull it back in three, two, and one. Again, pulling back into that lower level tempo or upper level conversation pace, depending on where you're at, friends, shifting that gear back. We're not taking it into our full active recovery just yet. So did you just say that your very first race was a marathon? That can't be right. You mean your very first marathon oh. race? No, 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 no. My first race back after like the COVID everything was my marathon. I about to say, I'm like, no, I'm not that. Okay, listen, I am, I'm, I got some tendencies, but no, my first race was a 5K. Yeah, that's what I thought. And I was like, I think I'm misunderstanding. I'm not really sure where we're going with this, but okay, good, good. Okay, so your first race after COVID was a marathon? That, yeah, I had already had it planned. So I was like, oh, I'm not gonna... I'm not going to not do it. If I'm going to go big, I'm going to go home. And I mean, it went as well as a first marathon goes. It, yeah. it was a lot, but um, for it, it kind for of a broke marathon free. girl. It just <laughs> the oh, number gosh. of the marathon or the number of the half marathon or the number of the 10K. Sometimes it's the number of the mile race. It's just you never can 100% go into it. You may have had a completely different expectation and, you know, things just that's why we're so focused whenever we work with athletes to make sure that they have the A, B, and C goal. 
because it's so important to know that there's so many other factors that can come into play. There's so many factors that come into play that we could never, ever, ever predict, like going to the wrong racing corral. Uh, <laughs> or losing your fuel and breaking the car. Oh, oh not gosh. to name any names. Yeah. Um, so, friends, we are going into that 30-second actor recovery that's going to feel so amazing and yet so darn short <laughs> in 15 <laughs> seconds. So go ahead and pull it all the way through. Don't let up just yet. This is where we want that head up nice and tall, shoulders done and back. Keep pushing, friends, because you've got this in three, two, and one. Pull it on back nice and easy into that active recovery. Take that breath and know that we are knocking on heaven's door. But... I don't know if that's a great analogy for running. (laughs) Is is it not? Because we're going with seven heaven, like seventh heaven, our seventh set. Come on, girl. (laughs) I was like, see the light. I'm like, no, stay away from the light. (laughs) All right. Well, we're going in with this being an awesome feeling set because it's our seventh set in three, two, and one. Let's go. Where our brains go in different directions (laughs) will never stop astounding me. Of just the oh, way, like, I'm like, oh God. And you're like, no, it's you for it. Yeah. Like, okay, I like yours better. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with yours. Mine's pretty darn good on this one. Yes, yeah, because I do like a little bit of the seventh heaven or as um, I believe one of our rock stars mentioned earlier on, she loved the second to last as the penultimate set. And I've always talked about it being a bit of a struggle for me on that second to last set. So trying to have some positive connotations around it knowing that, you know, we've got stronger. We've put in a lot. We've already proven to ourselves exactly six times that we can do this work. So just putting it in a little bit longer here. Well, and it's not going to surprise you, but seven is one of my lucky numbers. (laughs) (laughs) It really is, You're going to have to get back to me on one of your unlucky numbers for realsies. (laughs) I don't actually have unlucky numbers. I just have numbers that I don't have any, like, firm connection to, I guess. What would that be? Um, I'll get you, back to you. Putting you on the spot there. I mean, I don't really have a note. I, uh, 15. 15 doesn't really do it much for me. 15. Okay. See, and then like in the Hispanic culture, quinceanera is like sweet 15 instead of sweet 16. And I think that's a pretty cool number. I don't necessarily like, I don't know. I mean, I'm like, so are you saying we should do 15 rounds? Oh my I'm just God. kidding, everybody. I'm that, just kidding. That is the way to surefire have somebody curse at us. We may never. <laughs> we'll have nobody left around. You'll be like, no. All right, folks, let's get back to it. Let's do a real head to toe check in here. You've got two, about two minutes down, just a little over two minutes to go in this particular set. So let's talk about all of those details. Coach, one of your very favorite, my favorite warm quote or cues of yours is where you help people tuck in that pelvis a little bit so that they can actually really feel that core engagement. How about you give it to us right here and now? Cause it truly is one of my favorite cues. So you might be thinking, uh Oh, she's talking to me. It's okay. We all do it. If you are noticing that your glutes are sticking out and you're feeling that little bit of twinge in your lower back, go ahead and just tuck the pelvis in. You'll feel that core engage immediately. You'll feel the change in your stride. You'll feel the cadence change. It is that magic that we just have to make sure that we turn on. So again, especially as these reps got longer and longer and we start getting towards the end, if you're feeling that lower back tendency, that little twinge, that little eh, Again, super technical term. Just make sure that you're tucking in, not sticking the butt out. Again, I love my butt. I think I said it in the beginning. I'm pretty sure I say it every single recording. But this is a time to not pop block and drop it. We want it safe and secure. Tuck the pelvis. Maybe give a little shimmy and shake with your arms. That's my other Q-tip that I love. Look like you are taking off like a graceful bird towards your last set. 
Ooh, is that good enough? <laughs> I love that. But I think we, could, we can lock it. They can lock in that pelvic, tuck it in, and then just engage that core. I think, though, I want to continue talking about our breath just off of that because when people think about engaging their core or any kind of different shift in their form, they sometimes will hold their breath. Again, reminding you it's super important, friends. You are quite literally fueling those beautiful muscles of yours by breathing in. So don't hold your breath. Go ahead and make sure you're filling in. At least you're getting in that oxygen as much as you possibly can. As we shift on down in three, two, and one into that lower level gear, not all the way back into where we're idling just yet. We're still working hard. We're still working strong. Knowing that while you're in this little bit of a lighter pace, you can also go ahead and really focus in on that form. This is where maybe you've gotten... I hate to use the word sloppy, but let's be honest, towards the end of any hard work, we tend to maybe kind of start to fall apart a little bit, get a little loosey-goosey. I'm thinking, again, I know that you don't know this reference, dirty dancing, spaghetti arms. This is where I want you to really (laughs) bring it all in, friends, and make sure that you're still nice, tall, strong. You've got those arms tucked close to your rib cage. You are definitely moving them nice and strong. You've got your hips tucked in, your core's engaged, your breathing. Feels like a lot doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, it, it is a lot. And I like, I'd like to point out sloppy should not have a negative connotation with it. Sloppy Joe's literally in the name <laughs> tacos, sloppy burritos, sloppy. We still love them. It's okay. But I am really happy that you made the point about engaging the core and not letting it affect our breathing. Cause I think that's something from when we're very young, especially for females, we're taught to quote unquote, tighten our stomachs and we hold our breaths. That is not engaging your core. That's just holding your breath. So when we talk about tucking and engaging that core, it does not change your breathing to engage the core. It is literally the shifting of the pulling of the muscles. So again, Christine, this is why I love you because you take my brain and you get it, you understand it, you make these great points and Man, I could kiss you through this computer. Well, you're more than welcome to, but friends, (laughs) let's go ahead and continue kicking a little bit of asphalt before we start kissing anything just yet. Maybe kissing some doubt goodbye, because we're going to definitely kiss this set goodbye in three, two, and one. We're going to pull it back right here and now for 30 seconds, and then we're going to take it good, deep, cleansing breath. This is definitely, we've got some dragon energy having to come forward because we are going into our eighth, our very final set. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. This is like at the point of my run where not always in my head, but mostly always in my head. I like yell. I'm like, heck yeah. Just because it's like, it's there. Mm -hmm. Like it gets you pumped. So let's heck yeah. Right into this next set in three, two, And one, this is where likely everybody had a little bit of a stronger push on their programming for this week. So friends, let's do it. Let's go for it. Let's go ahead and shift that gear. Let's take it up. You're about 20 seconds in. I bet you can give us just a little bit more here. Oh yeah, I'm definitely, I'm not even flirting with the seven on the RP scale. I'm not playing hard to get. I'm like, yes, I love you. I want you. Let me have you. So let's lock that in and let's keep it all the way through. This is where maybe you're using a little bit of imagery in your head if you're rocking on through here on the treadmill. Because I know we have a lot of folks hitting that treadmill and using that imagery of being out on the race course, feeling nice and strong. You're finishing strong. You're feeling good. If you are rocking and rolling outside, maybe this is where you find something out there in the distance that you work towards and make it your own finishing corral. And there's nothing, and I do mean nothing that feels quite as amazing as starting to come up to that finish line where that tunnel, where you hear the people you've maybe been drudging through all by yourself for quite some time or maybe you've been even kind of in that six or seven set, not loving life so much. But here is where you can have all of those fans spectating, cheering you on, taking you through, and you can actually see the finish line just up ahead. You just have to continue working one step at a time toward it. I'm going to call foul because I know one thing that you would love more than the beautiful picture you just painted. 
if all the spectators at the finish line were dogs. Okay, I do love dogs. Like, I seriously <laughs> love dogs. But I, where I thought where you were going with that was what I really love more than that is that photo pass photographer. Like, this is where... <laughs> I swear, even if I feel like dog poo for all of the dog spectators, I'm going to try to look my absolute best for those finish line photos that live forever on the internet. You know what I'm talking about, friends. So if all of our other form cues didn't resonate with you, all we have to do is remind you that there's a photographer at every single finish line and usually even in those tunnels when you want to look as good as you possibly can. <laughs> I still giggle to myself when I pass other runners. And I know that my form immediately gets better. I'm like, Shelby, what are you doing? Like, you know, you know that you should be doing this all the time. But it's that positive reinforcement that it sometimes is. even us coaches need. Be like, no, girl, you gotta, you gotta look like you're you're just loving life floating on a cloud. Absolutely. So that means that right here and now, friends, with the final 75 seconds on this particular upper level work where you are working hard and strong, we want that big smell on your face because you know, even when you're in that race day, feel it, those feels and you're kind of struggling. The minute you know the photographer's on the course, you put a big old cheesy grin on your face. And of course, that helps you feel a little stronger. It gives you even a little extra pep in your step long past that photographer. I know it does for me. It definitely kind of helps to turn things around a little bit for quite some time. So let's go ahead and do that because we are knocking on that two minute segment before we pull back into our recovery. And by that, we mean like a cool down recovery. That's going to feel absolutely amazing, but you want to make sure that you are working for it here so that you have no regrets. Quite literally, that is the worst feeling. It's feeling you could have given it a bit more. Oh, yeah. But I feel like everybody who has made it to this point is sitting there being like, I can do this because it is almost done. And there is something about that last set that is the magic number eight ball. Ha! See, I can I can do it all day long. <laughs> well, let's pull it back in three, two, in one, two, two minutes. We're still not done yet. This is just where maybe you are trying to pull back just a bit because you've maybe crossed the finish line, but you're not really able to stop quite yet. So you still want to run strong or sometimes those really big races, they have what feels like 48 timing mats and you're not quite sure which <laughs> one's actually the finish line timing mat that's going to record your time. So you don't want to slow down quite yet to a conversation pace or you don't want to slow down into a walk. So keep rolling strong, literally at London, which is feels like it's right around the corner with one of the phenomenal spring races. London, I felt like I was in the tunnel for at least three miles, but they had <laughs> what felt like at least 15 to 20 timing mats. I'm sure in my head, that's not really how it went down, but in my head, that's what it felt like. So you guys have got it. That finish line is in sight. We've got 60 more seconds here. Now I've got you guys working at that 50 to 60%. If you feel like Man, I feel so amazing here. I want to pick it up just a little bit more. I won't tell Coach Shelby that you did that if that's what you decide to do. It'll be a secret la, la, between la, me la, and la, you. La. <laughs> I do. I find it hilarious, though. As you started the rant about the timing mats, I'm like, oh, there's some pain behind her eyes. Like, she has definitely it, had that before. It was. Literally, I'm like, where is, am I done? Have you recorded it? Am I finished? Am I not finished? What's going on? I feel like you're literally teasing me with a finish line. And then I, oh. I love London so much. It was the one and only times that I could say that there was such a huge crowd support that I was totally disoriented. I couldn't find the support stations, literally could not find them because there were so many crowded people. Their finish line shoot was so loud. I could, I actually walked past my, my t-shirt. Like they hand you a t-shirt at the end. I totally walked past it. So friends, you're not going to walk past your free t-shirt here and you're definitely going to get your medal in just 10 seconds. That actually did happen to somebody at the Boston Marathon, by the way. One of the rim chair racers missed the turn <sighs> for the timing mat. So it, it happens. Uh, three, two, and one. Pull it back. You did not, though, friends. Not here. We're not going to let that happen. Not on our watch. So you are done. Officially, you've hit that time. Let's go ahead and pull it back, Rockstar. Be super, super proud of yourself. We're going to go right into a five-minute walk. And again, you know, you've been rolling with us all spring. We love our long warmups. We definitely don't skip on our active recovery cool downs. We have mentioned myriad of times. We're going to continue preaching it till the cows come home or until pigs fly or all of the above. 
as to how (laughs) important these are to help minimize injury. I honestly, I just, more on the, the mental side than the physical side, I am giving myself such a pat on the back. I think it is just miraculous that I stuck with it. Yes, I love that. I think consistency is one of the most important things that we can do to show any kind of just commitment to ourselves because there's so much that comes into play over especially a course of 16 weeks, right? There's so much that's out of our control, but knowing that we stay committed to any endeavor that we set out for. And look, it don't gotta be pretty. It just gots to get done. Absolutely. So friends, we've got just a little bit longer here, a bit over three minutes before we pull it back into our dynamic stretches. Again, super important to not skip these. I think we've been preaching that since the very beginning. If you are absolutely running out of time and it's hard to do these cool downs, even if you come back to do some stretches before bed, maybe some foam rolling, totally okay. Or if you're going to do what Coach Shelby tends to do, which is she'll multitask some of her um, post-run stretches a little bit with answering some email or, I don't know, doing squats in between making breakfast, whatever it takes. I, again, multitasking saves lives, people. Except for when it's like actually driving a vehicle or anything. That analogy really didn't work as I started thinking it through, but you guys get the gist. Well, I think what it comes down to is that when you're short on time, but you know that you want to stay committed and consistent, it's really important to make sure, and we've said this again, it may not always look ideal. It may not be a luxurious, like, 15 minute yoga session on the beach or in a gorgeous Zen spa or yoga studio. It may be very like simple. You're doing squats while you're mopping the floor. Um, but a little bit of functional fitness always comes into play as well. So just kind of finding ways to make it work regardless, but definitely not skipping this. Um, even if you have to pause it and come back to it later, we are going to have just a few static stretches as we move forward with this, but we have probably, I don't know, two more minutes here to walk it out. Feeling good Seeing about everybody ourselves. everybody embracing the walk cool down too. Everybody's really making a point and effort to include that mm-hmm. in the workout and not just saying, okay, the hard work's done. I'm, I'm good. Like tap me out. And hearing everybody, especially for a couple of our PMPers that are working from home, they're being mindful to do the stretches before going back to their desk and before going back to their the rest of their day. It's really uplifting to hear those small changes that we do know make big payoffs. Exactly. So friends, you should be back at home or maybe you're going to be popping off of that treadmill here in about 60 seconds. And just so that you're aware, we're going to have you find a very safe space it that you are going to do this outside your front door or clear off some space in your treadmill room. Um, We're going to have you do a bit of a forward fold, some runner's lunges, and a bit of quad stretch. Again, if you may have a little bit more extra static stretches planned out for you in your programming, always good to check that out as well. But here and now, knowing that you've got 30 more seconds, but this is where I want you guys to also add in a little spice of an add a girl or an affirmation or maybe even a takeaway from today's workout of when you didn't think you could do it, but you did, you pushed for it. Heck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm like. I had to like take a deep breath before I did that. I love it. Okay, friends, take a deep breath here and now go ahead and bring it to a close here in three, two, and one. Find that little spot in your room, your front door, out in your garage, wherever you're at. Let's go into our runner's lunch. That is a great stretch for your hips, your hip flexors, your groins, your legs. Plus, they just feel kind of cool. Like, because it kind of feels like that position where you're at the start line. We don't have to make you work out again (laughs) afterwards, I promise. So you're going to take your right leg and you are going to bring it 
parallel to the ground as you lean into it, but you're gonna be very mindful of your knees. You don't want your knees to go too far below your toes. You're gonna to have that plank position where you have your hands directly below your shoulders. If you have a mat, your right foot should be kind of the outer edge of your mat. You're gonna relax into your hips and your back, letting them sink through the ground. You're gonna breathe and hold for 30 seconds in three, two, and one. That should feel absolutely amazing here. These amazing, are amazing, also... stringent, either or, whatever, whatever verb you it want for a feel, adjective. It should feel amazing, even if you use this maybe in between some of your work meetings if you're sitting all day long. Um, me included, specifically. Lots of sitting with lots of running and not a lot of stretching can lead to feeling a little bit of extra discomfort. So these are great to incorporate throughout the day. A little hard to do depending on your clothes, but go ahead and bring this to an end in three, two, and one. Bring that leg back up. However you need to get back up into a standing position, we are then going to pull ourselves back into that plank position. On the left side, you're gonna step your left foot forward to the outer edge of your mat. You're gonna relax through your hips and back, making sure you breathe through this entire thing. Again, not holding our breath. Let's hold it for 30 seconds in three, two, and one. Oh, feels so good. It's one of those things to where it's, it's kind of like running. It might feel like a little discomfort, but oh, it feels good. And I have to say, just because it's called a runner's lunge makes my heart happy. I know, right? I love it when a yogi uses it as a runner's lunge. I'm like, that's right. We're like so cool that we even have our own posture. I'm pretty sure that it's probably not in Sanskrit, but that's okay. Runner's lunge. It's called get. a runner's lunge and we still don't do it. No, I'm just kidding. So in front, let's go ahead and finish this up in three, two, and one. Bring your feet back together. Stand up nice and straight. Breathe in nice and deep. Maybe bring those arms up overhead and then a nice gentle forward fold. But I want a bend in the knees as you come down. And now you don't have to reach the floor. You don't have to reach your feet. You don't have necessarily even come to your shins. Maybe your hands are just above your knees. That's all okay. Whether it's your quads, you're just above your knees or just underneath your knees or on your shins or you come all the way to the floor, have a light bend in your knees, especially after this run. We don't want anybody locking out here. Um, it just isn't going to feel great and you don't want to overstretch in this position. We're going to stay here for about 15 more seconds just because this one is my all-time favorite. It really is. I love so cradling good. my elbows. That uh, has a, a tendency. A it's so I don't actually overextend myself. It keeps me at a proper forward fold where my body's at versus really trying to reach too far down and then inadvertently maybe straining something. Awesome. I love it. All right, friends, hopefully you love it as well. Let's go ahead and bring ourselves back up nice and easy, bringing slowly back to standing position. No rush because we don't want that blood kind of just rushing out of our head and making us feel woozy. And then we are going to wrap it up with, I think, one of Coach's favorites. A deep sumo squat or a, a quad stretch, actually, Coach? You want to give us a little bit of a quad stretch here? Oh, I want the sumos. I didn't even think about sumos okay. here, but I'm, I'm doing a sumo. Friends, you're going to get a deep. I, we're going to change it up right here on the fly because Coach is always going to do the squat. She's always going to squat oh. like it's hot. So let's go, Coach. You said it. We talked about Bruno. Get those feet nice and wide, everybody. Nice over, over going past your shoulders. Put those toes pointing out, and we're gonna drop it in three, two, and one. You can go ahead and sumo squat it down, and then use your elbows to kind of push your knees out a little bit and stay there for a few seconds. Or you can go up and down in that sumo squat. Whatever you do, just make sure that you are sitting back again putting that pressure through your heels. You might have some creaks, some cracks, and some pops on the way down, but it feels good, doesn't it? Better than the runner's lunge? I'm just kidding. It's not a competition. Squats always win. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. If you say so. So come on back up if you are down or get your last squat in in three, two, and one. Shake it out. Give a smile, give a pat on the back, maybe yell out some explicits. 
we aren't here to judge. Whatever gets all of that energy flowing and bursting out of you, we're here for the energy. Well, what I love, friends, is that by now you should be feeling a little sassier, a little spicier, definitely a whole lot of that extra energy where you feel like you can take on the world. So our quote for today, after you're giving yourself that pat on the back and we remind you, you're going to refill, you're going to rehydrate, you know where to find us if you have any questions, either on your final surge or emailing us. We are so proud of you as we continue rocking through the final weeks of the spring training. And that's officially a wrap, friends. Thank you so much for coming along with us, kind of getting that little that little brunch tasting of our Pedals, Medals, and PRs spring training group workout. I know our PMPers are going to be so excited to be able to talk to you guys in our Facebook group about this. And we just can't wait. It gets us even more excited to kick off that summer training crew. So if you're interested in that, please, again, check the show notes, sign up for the interest form, because anybody on that interest form is going to get first dib for the limited spots. When we do get the sign up, you'll get the details, the updates, all first come, first serve. We might not have a complete RSVP list, but we have a brunch P list. We can make that a thing, right? <laughs> VIP or VIB, very important brunchers for sure. So we'll make sure that you get that. And again, we keep it limited, friends, not because of any other reason, but because we want to make sure that no one feels like just another number. It's very important for us to keep our uh, training groups in a way where they're manageable for us to be able to give a bit of extra love and attention to each individual within that training group. But we also feel that there's a lot of value within a group, especially doing very similar workouts. Even if you're doing completely different pieces, you're maybe working for a completely different race. There's so much value in working together, hearing like just the encouragement of each other, but again, the encouragement of other people that are kind of right there in the trenches with you, training strong and feeling good along the way. And maybe a couple times when you don't feel that great, it's good to have a little bit of extra boost as well. And if you want more of that, we want those weekly focuses. We've got some round tables that come up. We have private podcasts. We have a lot of opportunities for you to meet and greet with each other virtually with Zoom parties, um, little pop-up challenges, which we particularly love. We also added in a little bit of strength flavor. You'll hear more about that in upcoming weeks as well. But um, if you want that and more, we do urge you to definitely use that that link to sign up. But friends, we are not going to leave you without a little bit of brunch because, you know, we have to break bread together in our brunch table. So while you're getting back to your regular day, you're rehydrating and refueling and all of that jazz, let's share some of our favorite recipes because we love our little versus showdown. So coach, this is one of my all time favorite sweet recipes. It is the black bean brownies. When I first heard it, I thought it sounded like the grossest thing in the entire world. And now it's one of my all-time favorite go-tos. And it is so, so yummy. So I can't wait to bake up a batch of these. What are you serving on your side of the brunch table? On my side, I'm breaking away from my normal quiche love. And I'm breaking out a mushroom and spinach bread pudding. Not only does it have my savory heart, but you know I am a fan of shopping your pantry, shopping your refrigerator, and trying to limit my food waste. So this to me is its the next best thing to quiche. The jury's love- still out if it'll supersede my quiche love, but we'll, we'll see. We're keeping an open mind. I love how you're bringing out a little bit of that extra expertise and knowledge that you shared with our What the F is for Dinner workshop, which of course was very exclusively first come first serve to our spring training group as well so friends don't forget to check out our quick bites edition it's a light movement focused episode drops on wednesdays man we have had so much fun with our wednesday episodes they have been covering the gamut of conversation (laughs) while you get in some great opportunity to move and groove and however it feels good to you for your body at that day and time and then of course we can't wait to see you again next Saturday when it's time for brunch where we're going to serve a whole lot of fun with more miles and a side of smiles take care